Hey, Jeremy Cook here, and, and if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I've got a Maker Ultimate 2, one of these printers back here, but it's been a little bit finicky lately. In fact, this time I just honestly didn't feel like fixing it. So what I decided to do was get a Ender 3 Neo version 2. I don't know why that's not called an Ender 4 or Ender 3.5, but it looks like a pretty good printer. It's got auto bed leveling function, and kind of one of the things I thought was awesome about it is that it's open. I always thought that my Ultimate 2 was a good thing because it's just solid and enclosed and just kind of built like a tank. But honestly, after working on it for a while, it just seems like a good thing to have everything open and, and able to get to it. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm not really going to do a full review on this because plenty of people have done that. But I'll kind of do an unboxing and just kind of see what kind of the differences are and kind of my motivation for making this switch. Hopefully this is the right decision. I mean, for like 300 bucks, supposedly a pretty good printer for the price. So we will see. I'll go ahead and time how long it takes to unbox this and put it together. And that's one of the things that really sold me on the V2 Neo is that it says it's, I think, 95% assembled. So follow along and see how it turns out, because I, I don't really know at this point. So to keep everything honest here, I'm going to go ahead and start my stopwatch, start or stop my phone, and you can see it going here. We'll see how long it takes me to actually set it up. It's interesting how it's constructed here. You've got basically a, a little machine slot that it fits right in. Probably not 100% needed, but I'm going to go ahead and use these ball head metric screws. About 17 minutes. I could be misreading this, but it seems like this is the display screen. It also appears that this goes on this side. Might have to actually go back and watch the video. I'll keep the timer running. So it looks like the problem is that I've got this gantry installed backwards, so I'm going to go ahead and go back and correct that. Oh, 40, uh, 48 minutes. Not too bad for having never seen it before. Of course, I've still got to get it hooked up, so I'll keep that running for a bit. Well, it seems to be behaving itself. I think you're supposed to do some manual level leveling as well, so kind of cool to see it working, but I don't think I'm going to consider this fully set up yet. So about an hour to get it somewhat working. Um, I haven't actually printed anything on this yet. I've kind of set up my rack for it to make make that a little bit taller, set it up on Octoprint. Although I really appreciate the open design of this and just the fact that it's a very, very well-known printer. I think that'll be great when I need to get support. And at 300 bucks, roughly, pretty much of a bargain compared to a lot of other, other things out there. Well, let's go ahead and try printing one of the samples. This will print the boat as, a, as is tradition. That is pretty cool. It does a little preview of it. So confirm that. Well, it's all done. Let's check it out. Or, well, let's see. Look at that. Wow. That looks really beautiful. A lot better than the video I watched on it, to be honest. I guess Just just Vlad did a video on it. Kind of helped me set that up. Sample looks a lot better than his did, even though I used kind of his same setting stuff. Took 146, which seems like a lot, but I guess that's about 
about right. What I like with Octopad is I had it set up so that I could turn it off when it was done. And I definitely want to do that. So I've got some more setup work to do on that. I mean, I guess I'll miss the, the mono price, but it's been a little finicky. I mean, just how easy to set, set it up it was i thought that was awesome you know i do 3d printing but i don't really consider myself or my channel a 3d printing channel it's more about using this as a tool i guess just the fact that you have all this documentation out there that i can like look up and use and stuff i, I think that's maybe the biggest selling point of this i mean before i thought it was okay to, to use something that was kind of kind of unique and you know it is it is built like a tank which is awesome but i just think that having something that a lot of people use is a huge selling point maybe it's something that I didn't quite appreciate before so I think I'm really going to like this. It looks a little, uh, a little lonely here, so I, I kind of wouldn't mind having another one right there. I saw something, some people do like a thing where they put this, this on the side. That's fine, it's probably good, but at the same time it takes up a little bit more room horizontally. So if I had the goal of getting another one at some point, that'd be tough. The one thing I did do was I mounted it right here in between the... See on this side you've got the two, two screws. I actually mounted that right there as far to the left as I could, so I think that'll be okay. You know, compared to the Monoprice where you've just got this thing looped over and stuff I think I think it'll be fine but yeah I'm looking forward to this got some other stuff I'd like to do with it like you know setting up Octoprint on it also I somebody sent me some uh, new firmware that I could use so I'm, I gotta maybe check that out so yeah pretty happy with this pretty excited about what I can do with it probably need to clean this up this, this originally had my CNC router on it but I sold that but now it's apparently it's all clean and now it's all junked up so got some stuff to clean but overall my uh, my shop's been Looking pretty clean these days.